Hello Hacker, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing maintaining persistent connections and backdoors. The way we're going to be doing this is, uh, is using Metasploit. Now on the screen, this is kind of, this is kind of the example is that you know, we're, a, we're an attacker, we gain access to a server, and now we have an interpreter session. Now what happens if the service crashes or the server's rebooted? Well, our, our connection is going to break, so we want to be able to fix that. We want to add a script that basically calls back to the attacker workstation every few seconds. And what will happen is now, if the server is rebooted, well, yeah, we'll lose our initial connection, but then we can fire up another listener and wait for that connection to happen. And when it does, reestablish connection with the server. So let's show you that. <clears throat> so as you can currently see, we... Uh, we do, we do not have a, a connection. And let's go ahead and establish one. And as we establish a connection, take a look at the, the, the processes that are running. As you can see that here's our interpreter and here's the process that is running our connection. Now what happens, like I said, if this process dies? Well, we lose our connection. Now let's try to reestablish a connection with the server. And we can't. So that might have been our chance to get whatever we wanted wanted to get, um, or demonstrate whatever we were trying to demonstrate, and uh, and we lost it. So we don't we don't want that to happen in the future. So let's reestablish our connection with the server. As you can see, here's our process. Here's our connection. So what we want to do now is <clears throat> run persistence, and we'll do a dash h to take a look at the options. Now, two options you want to pay attention to are the P and the R. The P is the port, and the R is the remote system that the server will be calling back to. Now, P is important because if certain uh, corporate firewall, fi firewall rules are blocking outbound ports, you don't want to use a port that's blocked. So we want to use uh, a common port that's allowed, maybe port 80 or port 8080, um, and then R, you know, depending if we're an internal workstation, we want to use our internal address or if we're using this exploit remotely, we want it to call back to our external IP address. Now, let's go ahead and uh, add port 444, and we're going to have it return back to our IP address here, which is as displayed. Now, a couple things to take a look at again as we run this are the services. So go ahead and press enter. You can see it gives you uh, some information on this side, but also we can see that there's a, a few extra services that are now running on this device. Now this service is the particular service that you want to pay attention to. And what you're going to see is this now back door kind of showing itself and hiding itself. And what it's doing is it's executing and then it's killing itself. It's waiting a few seconds, then it's going to execute and then it's going to kill its process. So this is going to kind of try to hide itself a little bit from the administrator. Now, before, if you guys remembered, when we killed our initial service, we lost our connection. So let's go ahead and kill that service again. And there it goes, we, we lost our connection. But now, with persistence, we can press exploit, and if you notice, we re received another connection from the server, which allowed us to reestablish our connection. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget, follow me on Instagram. And, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the pipes. Take care.